an anxiety about not being able to fit. Now, there's some great, great examples right now about people who are transgender, right? So, um, you're, are you male or are you female or are you both? Or if you have ambiguous genitalia, which is a certain percentage of the population, like 1% or more with both sets of genitalia, or at least are ambiguous. So the question is, anything that's ambiguous, the mind has a difficult time with. We want to categorize. We want everything to be neat and clean and, and simplified. And so Since we humans create our social order, we create these social categories of belonging, right? why don't we invent more categories? We do invent categories. And I go into the, in the book, I talk about the origin of race 500 years ago. Race, didn't, race was not a social category 500 years ago. It comes into existence in a particular time and, and particular reasons having to do with colonial expansion into the Americas and the need for labor. I don't want to get into it. Some of you probably know it. The main thing to talk about is that there, people did not identify on the basis of the category race prior to around 500 years ago. It didn't exist. There were other categories that were salient, but that category didn't exist. Then it came into existence. And then people started making these distinctions, and we continue to make these distinctions. But that means that we are incapable of inventing new types of social um, organization based on um, any kind of need that we have. Right? So when we, when we have categories and we fit into categories, we tend to feel that we belong. When there are categories and we don't belong is when we end up feeling like out of place, literally out of place. And there always are, in any society, some people who don't fit neatly into the categories of belonging that exist. And they tend to be, a lot of boundary work is done on them. Oh, you should, you know, you're not married, you should be married, you should be having children. You know, you're, you know, you're female, you've got to have children in order to be a true female, you know, in society. You must do that. So people will press you into these kinds of categories. Um, and so sooner or later, maybe there'll be a new category, which is professional woman. And a professional woman might be able to be someone who doesn't have children, or doesn't have many children, or maybe gets and has children very late in life, or something of that sort. But it doesn't mean that you have to do that in order to be a full-fledged woman in society. Um, I was going to say, I struggled more with this when I was younger, in high school. But I grew up in a really strict um, Muslim household, and my parents were Sudanese, and um, their culture is polar opposite from what Americans are. And so like I struggled a lot with having to feel American because I I am American. I grew up here and I went to school with American kids and coming back home to a house that was not anti American but not American. So it was so hard to me. it was really hard for me to figure out which one I wanted to be and the more I got to learn about Sudanese culture I didn't feel like I was a part of it. Um, but the more I got to be on my own and grow up I I I'm consistently trying to that like way out, which I am more. You know, now that I don't live with my parents anymore, I'm much more American than I am Sudanese. And you are an excellent, excellent example of precisely what I'm talking about, is that when the society says, you're either with us or you're against us, you're either this or you're that, you know, you then... You can be both. Huh? You can be both. Can be both. Exactly. But the problem right now is that there's not a category for that. Mm -hmm. So I basically argue, why not invent a new category, right? Why don't, we, why don't we celebrate people like yourself who have these multicultural abilities? I actually argue that we're all multicultural, but people are suffering because we think we're supposed to be monocultural. And that fit into one versus the other, right? When indeed, all of life is about going from cultural context to cultural context. Yours happen to be a little bit more intense because home was so much different from outside of home. But you know, when I'm home, my home is different, you know, and I behave differently, I certainly dress differently, and I speak differently than when I'm out, you know, and I'm doing my professorial thing. Um, and when I speak Spanish, my whole gestures and my tone, everything changes. Very, you know, people tell you that when you're speaking another language, and I'm sure that happens to you. Yeah, and I still battle with it when I go back home, you know, I still have to like, so, so they're doing boundary work on you. They're saying yeah. basically you have to be this, or you have to be that, you have to be this, you have to. 
No, you see, through this particular perspective, which I'm arguing for, then if we all begin to see ourselves as multicultural, some with greater flexibilities than, than others, some with, you know, then we are more liberated to really feel that the objective here is to feel that you belong, to have a sense of when you feel that you belong, but when you're belonging, you're in your cultural comfort zone, and then you should still push yourself to be discomforted because that's when you're learning.